Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and today we're doing a Q&A all about my recent plastic surgery. I did a little Q&A session on my Instagram stories a while ago. I got a ton of questions. You guys, and it seems like you guys have a lot of questions, things you wanna know about the plastic surgery, how I, why I went to Mexico, how the recovery has been for both me and my friend Amy who had plastic surgery right along with me which was incredible. I will actually link our plastic surgery vlog down below for you if you missed it. I vlogged the entire experience from start to finish. So I will link that video for you. And today I'm going to answer all of your questions. I'm even going to insert some clips from Amy answering some questions that you guys had as far as her procedures went as well. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not because I upload my videos every single week and I'll do additional plastic surgery recaps and keep you guys posted in my videos. So again, make sure you're subscribed and your bell's turned on so you don't miss it. Don't forget to check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching. I do offer personalized to you macros and calories. This is how I myself have lost over 140 pounds, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching if you would like to chat with me directly. Links and discounts to my favorite things and my Facebook group are all down in that description box. Come and join us. So I'm actually going to clean my makeup brushes. We're going to do a little double duty here during today's video while I answer all of your questions. So let me flip you around, kind of show you my setup for cleaning my makeup brushes, and we'll jump into the questions. Here's what I'm gonna be working on during today's video. I kinda of wanted to show you a little bit of behind the scenes when I clean my makeup brushes. I'm really bad about it. I usually wait way too long, really until I'm almost out of brushes, then I'll clean them. So I typically have quite a few face complexion brushes and then all of my different eyeshadow brushes. This is the cleaner that I use. It's the Cinema Secrets. I'm telling you, you guys, this is the best makeup brush cleaner. Literally, it dries in two seconds and it cleans your brush perfectly. It is my favorite, favorite cleaner. I put some in a bowl and then I have my towel here and I just dip the brush into the cleaner and wipe it on the towel and literally your brushes come out spotless and dry instantly. Highly, highly recommend this. I will link it down below for you. I will also be including pictures and things as I answer your questions. So I went ahead and screenshot it off of Instagram. I asked on Instagram, in my Facebook group and here on YouTube for your questions regarding plastic surgery, the whole experience for myself and Amy. So Let's start with the questions off of Instagram. So the first one is, what does your family think about you having plastic surgery and were they supportive? You're not gonna be able to see me clean my makeup brushes, by the way, but that's what I'm doing if I'm looking down. So yes, my family was very, very supportive. So my husband, of course, at first he was like, well, I don't know that you need plastic. And then he kind of caught himself and went, you've worked really hard, you deserve to have you deserve to be confident in your body and comfortable in your body. And that's pretty much exactly what my mom said as well as my in-laws. They just wanted me to be safe and make sure that this was for sure what I wanted to do because obviously you can't take it back. But everybody in my family was very supportive and all thought that it was a good decision on my part just so that I was able to basically reap the rewards of all of my hard work. Are the results what you hoped for? You look amazing. Thank you so much. And honestly, I don't see a lot of the results. That's been really hard mentally for me is I went through all of this and I'm, I'm talking, it's been a really hard recovery. This has definitely been harder than I ever thought that it would be. And I really don't see the results yet. I, I guess I should take that back. I see the results on my back. There's no more loose skin on my back those rolls of skin are completely gone. Although my back is still a little bit swollen, which makes my torso swollen. That's why I always say I look like SpongeBob. And so there's definitely that mind over matter situation happening. Cause I look at my body and I say, oh my gosh, my back looks amazing. The skin is gone, but then I'm swollen. So I have love handles and I don't have love handles. I feel flabby and bigger than I am due to the swelling, but I do see the results in my back for sure. Now my breasts are a little bit different. If you didn't know any type of breast surgery, whether it's a reduction, a lift or implants, takes a very long time to heal. Like we're talking months before my implants will drop into place. Right now they're sitting way up here. So 
my breasts look a little odd, to be completely honest. I mean, they definitely look better than they did before, but they still look a little strange. And so I'm not seeing the results yet. Uh, my extended lift and my implants. So that's been a little bit hard because honestly, my breasts have been the most uncomfortable part of the plastic surgery recovery. And the fact that I don't see really any results from them makes that a little bit extra hard. But I know as time goes on, I'm going to start to see those results and then it'll be a little bit easier to know that it's been worth it. I still feel like it's worth it, but I want to see results to really know that it's been worth it. Speaking of results, I'll go ahead and insert some pictures here before and after of Amy so you can see so far what her 360 tummy tuck results look like. What do you mean when you say your implants need to drop? This is a really good question. So whenever you get breast implants, they are actually put under your muscle and they are placed above your actual breast. So if your breast is down here, your implants are actually placed up here. The technical term I guess for it is they fluff or they drop. And basically what that means is as they heal, the implant will move from up here down into place, creating that full breast. The ultimate desirable breast will actually happen in time. Now, the amount of time that it takes for your implants to drop, fluff varies from person to person. Now, my friend Victoria, who told me about the plastic surgeon in Mexico, she said it took about three months for her, my next door neighbor, who's my good friend, and my friend Kate at boot camp, both have implants, and they said for them it was several months. And now they, they will drop as time goes on, and you'll see a little bit of difference. Like mine are definitely further down than they were immediately post-op. As of today, if you didn't know, I'm about three and a half weeks post-op. So they have definitely dropped a little bit since my actual surgery, but it can take months for them to actually look normal and to fall into place. And that's what I mean by delayed gratification when it comes to results. Have you ever had any major surgeries before this? Yes. When I was two years old, my appendix burst and actually I almost died. They didn't know that my appendix had burst. They thought that something else was wrong with me. And so I actually had my appendix removed when I was two years old. But other than that, no, I haven't had any other major surgeries. Would you recommend the doctor that performed your surgery to us. Yes, 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 and yes. Now in that plastic surgery vlog, the one that I'm linking down below for you, I talked about my experience. I had surgery in Tijuana, Mexico, if you didn't know. I talked about the hospital experience where I stayed post-op for a few days to recover. The hospital was incredible. It was beautiful. It was clean. Everybody spoke English for the most part, and if they didn't, they definitely had someone along with them to help translate what they were saying. So for the most part, the majority of the staff spoke English, and the doctor, not only is he a miracle worker, I can't believe the results that I saw in my own body and Amy's body from him, he was absolutely lovely, had amazing bedside manner, spent a lot of time with us, answered all of our questions. Like I said, my friend Victoria referred me to him, and. He is a U.S. board certified doctor. The hospital is a U.S. board certified hospital. So I would absolutely recommend him. And to be honest with you, I would go back to him again if I ever had any other plastic surgery in the future, which is a question that I'll be answering. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend. I feel like overall my care in Tijuana at CER Hospital with Dr. Suarez was better than any care I've ever received in the States. What's been the hardest thing about your recovery? Oh, you guys, let me just tell you, like I said, this recovery has been a lot harder than I honestly thought that it would be. Going into this plastic surgery, I thought, okay, my back is gonna be the worst, right? I have this incision across my whole back. That's going to be the worst part of the recovery. And what I've been told from my neighbor, from my friend Victoria, other than the time that it takes for your breasts to look normal and feel normal, Everybody says that that recovery has been pretty easy for them. I feel like what I expected and what I got are totally different. You know, like what I ordered versus what I got on TikTok. That's how I feel. I feel like my back was so easy. Simple, simple, simple. I feel like there was very little pain. I mean, there's some discomfort on the incision line, but that was the least of my worries. My breasts have been the hardest part of the recovery, the most uncomfortable, the most painful, and of course, the longest part of the recovery. So it was definitely way more than I thought that it would be. I mean, honestly, to be completely honest with you, this is probably the hardest thing I've ever been through. Did 
you develop any infections? If not, what preventative techniques did you use? No, I have had zero complications. I have done everything that my doctor has asked me to do from when I was in the hospital to when I was in the recovery house to when I've been home. I've done everything that I'm supposed to do as far as maintaining the incisions, cleaning the incisions, wearing my support garment. I actually wear a full support bra, which I have to wear for at least a month. And I'll tell you that it feels really uncomfortable without it. So I will probably wear it even longer than the month, but I have not had any complications or any infections. All I'm doing is following Dr doctor's orders to the T. How many cc's are your implants? Not asking to be nosy and are they under the muscle? So yes, my implants are under the muscle and my implant size was interesting because I had a size in mind going to Mexico, going into my consultation with Dr. Suarez and he asked me, you know, what size implants are you thinking? And I was kind of basing what I wanted off of my friend Victoria. Her and I are pretty similar height, pretty similar body shape. I'll actually insert a picture of Victoria here for you. So I thought that that would make the most sense for me is to kind of take the visual from her and utilize that as my thoughts for implant size. So when I went into my consultation with Dr. Suarez, that was what my original plan was, is to go with a 425 cc. So when I went into my consultation, he immediately made a comment about you must work out, which I thought was really nice because he said that I was very toned up and very fit for someone who has lost so much weight. He says he doesn't always see that. He does a lot of bariatric or weight loss surgery, patient plastic surgery. He does a lot of plastic surgery on people who have lost a substantial amount of weight. And he was pretty impressed with how physically fit I was. So he knew that I was very active. In fact, one of the first questions both Amy and I asked him, because we are both very active, is when can we go back to working out? So he knew that that was a big piece of my life and something that was of concern when it came to recovery of the plastic surgery. He also made a comment when I told him that I was thinking about 425s. He said, I think your body's too small for that. I've never been told my body is small in my entire life. So I was like, well, thank you. Thank you very much. That's actually a huge compliment. And then he was thinking just based on how active I am that that may be a little bit too large of an implant for me. So what we ended up doing when it was all said and done is I have 400 CC implants, which is a larger C, smaller D. And for me so far, I, like I said, I don't have the true results of what these are going to look like once they have dropped, fluffed, healed completely. Right now I'm really happy that I went with a 400 instead of a 425 because they're big enough and I want to make sure that it's not impeding my workout because that's way more important to me than anything else. So 400 cc is what I ended up with. Do you think you being in shape active helped you in your recovery and with pain? If so, what do you, how much percentage wise? So I absolutely think that the fact that I'm active and I'm in good shape and my health is where it needs to be, of course, that's going to help not only with the research, the surgery, but the recovery as well. Of course, I'm still in pain. I'm still have discomfort just like everybody else, but I definitely feel like the better health that we're in going into things like surgery in general, the easier it's going to be for us to not only make it through the surgery, but recover from the surgery. How much is it for a tummy tuck? And by the way, congratulations. So I did not have a tummy tuck. So as a reminder, the procedures that I had was I had a full back lift, a extended breast lift with implants. However, my friend Amy had a 360 tummy tuck. So I do know the cost of what her procedure was. I know kind of what that looked like because I was with her throughout the entire process. So her procedure for a 360 tummy tuck, now that's very different than a regular tummy tuck. This one actually goes around your whole entire body. A 360 tummy tuck in Tijuana at CER Hospital with Dr. Suarez was $7,000. Amy said that she was getting quotes in the upstate New York area, anywhere from about $25,000 to $35,000. And a lot of the surgeons in the US wouldn't do a 360 tummy tuck, which is really what Amy wanted. So about $7,000 for her procedure. Can you explain a little bit about the drains and what needs to drain? Yes, absolutely. So actually, funny story is the coordinator. So whenever you have plastic surgery out of the country or any surgery out of the country, you typically have a coordinator, which is someone that's going to 
walk you through the entire process, get you started, get you set up with a consultation, give you pricing, basically is your advocate throughout the whole process, especially leading up to your surgery. You don't actually meet the surgeon typically until you are in Mexico for surgery. At least that was my experience. I didn't meet Dr. Suarez until I was actually in Tijuana the day before my surgery. So the coordinator had told me that she didn't anticipate that I was going to have any drains. She said she was 99% sure I wasn't going to, and I ended up with two drains. My friend Amy had three drains. So drains basically allow the extra fluid post-surgery to drain. If your fluid doesn't drain post-surgery and basically sits in your body, you can develop what is called a seroma. I'll put the definition of what a seroma is here on the screen it's not something you wanna have because if you end up with that, they actually, I guess, have to insert a needle and draw the fluid out. So that is why drains are put into place. They're put into place strategically to drain fluid. So both of mine were in my back to drain all of the fluid from my back lift and I'm assuming the breast lift and implants as well. And like I said, I had two drains. I was hoping to have them taken out before I left Tijuana, that didn't happen. So they were removed at home by my friend Victoria. Actually, her husband is a nurse. So he came and removed my drains for me. It was a better experience than I thought. The cutting of the stitch was the worst, but the pulling out of the drain wasn't bad at all. So I ended up having to actually keep my drains for about two weeks in order for the fluid level to be where the doctor was comfortable removing them without any risk. And I haven't had any issues since removal. I wanted to talk a little bit about my drain removal. I was able to remove my own drains. I, if you remember, I did have three drains that I came home with. I was able to actually remove those drains all by myself. I just simply snipped the little incision, twisted the, the, the tube just a little bit, and then pulled it out. I had no trouble. It actually, it didn't hurt. It felt a little weird. I know some people say it makes them sick to their stomach, but honestly, pulling a Band-Aid off is worse than pulling out drains. So if you're questioning whether you need to, you can pull out your own drains, the answer is absolutely. I was full of anxiety, no need for it. It was very easy and I totally know that you can do it yourself. We just talked about the drain removal that I did myself and how easy that was. But it's important that we talk a little bit more in depth about the stitches in my belly button. I came home with six stitches in my belly button, my designer belly button that looks beautiful. I'm so excited on how it's healing. However, when it came time to take the stitches out, that was very difficult. It took a lot of patience. I had so much anxiety about it. The tough part is, is that I have no feeling in the belly button region. So when I would take the tweezer and pull on the stitch, I couldn't feel if it hurt, if it was good, bad. There was no indication any way. So I actually had two different sets of shears. I had a pair of sewing shears, and then I also had a little cuticle shear. I ended up having to use the cuticle shears. The sewing shears did not cut the stitch, but the cuticle shears were perfect. They were tiny. I just made sure I disinfected everything with alcohol per the doctor's instructions. And I just took the stitch and I wiggled it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it kind of showed the opening. You only clip one side of the stitch and then pull out the other. Once I got it clipped and got past the anxiety of finding that area, it was easy. They didn't hurt. However, later that night, I woke up in the middle of the night and my stomach ached horribly. So I did have to take a pain pill, but you definitely can take out your own belly button stitches. Just take a deep breath, take your time and go slow. And then make sure before you go to bed, you take a Tylenol because it definitely, even though you can't feel your stomach, it's definitely still sensitive and it, it woke me up in pain. Um, but nothing you couldn't manage. What did you wish that you would have known in advance? Honestly, I felt like I was very educated going into this experience. I had done a lot of research. I was very 
in constant communication with the coordinator. But one thing I wish I would have known, number one, is that I was going to have drains so that I could have mentally prepared for that. I know it's not her fault. She did say that the doctor would be the ultimate decision maker on drains. And I also wish that I would have known how extensive the recovery was. And I guess I kind of knew, but I kind of didn't know how hard and extensive the recovery was, especially having my breasts done, which like I said, I wouldn't change anything, but I just wish that I would have even known how hard it was gonna be even more than I already knew how hard it was gonna be. How did you know now was the time to do your surgery? So typically whenever you have plastic surgery, what they recommend is not only that you're at your goal weight, but you've been able to maintain your weight loss for a substantial amount of time. The information is three to six months. And once you have reached your goal and been able to maintain your weight loss, that's when it is recommended to have plastic surgery. Now, if you have any type of plastic surgery and you gain weight, it can affect the results of your plastic surgery, obviously. So for me, I knew that this is pretty much the weight I'm going to be at, and I really wanted to get the skin off for function so that I was able to work out heavier, that I was able to actually focus on building lean muscle and defining my back a little bit more. And it was just uncomfortable to have all the loose skin and the, the floppy boobs, to be honest. So for me, I knew that not only it was time due to my weight loss and being able to keep the weight off, but also just the functionality of where the skin was after the weight loss. How hard is going to the bathroom while recovering? This is actually a really good question. For me, it hasn't been very difficult because all of my procedures are upper body. Amy, on the other hand, I know has had a lot of trouble like sitting down, laying down, getting up. I know as of today, three and a half weeks post-op, she still isn't able to stand up completely straight. So I know for her, it's been a little bit more of an issue, not necessarily going to the bathroom, but the standing up, sitting up, getting up has been an issue. And of course it's hard for me because I'm not allowed to raise my arms above my shoulders. It's been hard for me. It's a little harder to reach those certain areas, but it hasn't been bad. It's definitely not been something that's been an issue for me. Knowing what you know now, would you still have it done? 100 million percent, absolutely. Even though I can't even see the full results, I would 100% do this all over again. So that was all of the questions over on Instagram. So I'm now in my Facebook group and going to answer the questions there. How are follow-up medical appointments handled? Do you have medical professionals in the U.S. monitoring you? And do you return to Mexico at some point for a final visit? So before I left Tijuana, I had a final visit with the doctor that they could check everything, take the tape off of my incisions and just make sure that I was cleared basically to go home. As of now, I send pictures to the surgeon every three days. I'm in constant communication with the surgery team in Tijuana and the pictures, they check the pictures and make sure that I'm healing properly if there's anything to be concerned about. I also had constant communication during the drain process, especially sending the amount of drainage and getting the go ahead to remove those. They do recommend that you come back after six months for a follow-up. I probably will do that only because it's an hour flight for me to go back there. But for Amy, I know it's a really long flight. So I don't know if she plans on going back for a six month. I know that you can follow up in the US with your primary care physician if needed. I feel like the follow up care has been fantastic. Anytime I have a question, I send a text and I get an immediate response. So I feel like overall, the follow up that I need can be done through my surgery, through my surgeon in Mexico. Do you have any info on dental tourism in Mexico? No, not really. I've never looked into that. However, if you didn't no, I live about 40 miles from the Mexico border in Arizona, and I have been told time and time again that I should go there for dental work because it's literally like a 40 minute drive. So I plan on looking into it a little bit. I've heard that some of the dental work in Mexico, not only is it more affordable, but it's really, really good care. So that's definitely something that I would encourage you to look into. What was the consultation like? How long after the consult did you have surgery? So like I said, I actually had my consultation with the surgeon the day that I arrived in Tijuana. So on Tuesday. So I had the consultation on Tuesday. I had plastic surgery on Wednesday. So basically it was the day before. And the reason for that is he marks up your body for surgery marks up where they're going to do the incision so that you can kind of see what what his plan is and then of course like I said you get to ask all of your questions I do show some of the markup and things in that plastic surgery vlog now that you have these areas done do you think that you'll have any additional plastic surgery no absolutely 100% no 
No, I actually told Troy, I said, if I ever come to you, ever, in our in the rest of our life and tell you that I want to have a surgery that doesn't save my life, remind me of this. So no, I will not be having any more plastic surgery. To be honest with you, if there were other things that I was concerned about or that I would want to have plastic surgery on in the future, I would have just done it all at once to get it out of the way. And at this point, I'm comfortable enough with my body. I'm okay with the loose skin on my thighs. I'm okay with the loose skin on my stomach. No, no more surgery for this girl. Did you go with saline or silicone implants? So my implants are silicone. The gummy bear implants is what they're called. That is really the norm now. The saline implants, I don't even know if anybody does that anymore. My surgeon was 100% a silicone only implant doctor. When can you start exercising again? Like I said, this was one of the first things Amy and I asked Dr. Suarez. He said after about four weeks, we should go, we should be able to start exercising again. That's not gonna happen. I'm three and a half weeks post-op right now and I know this is the same sentiment that Amy has. We are not ready to go back to exercising. To be honest with you, I don't have the energy and too much activity causes a lot of uncomfortable pressure for me in my breast area. So I honestly don't anticipate myself going back to boot camp or lifting weights until maybe towards the end of June. However, I did get clearance to start walking at about four weeks post-op, which will be this Wednesday. So I plan on starting to take about a 30 minute walk every day. I really want to get my endurance back. I wanna make sure that I'm ready to go back to my full on physical activity once I'm able, but I'm thinking that's probably, like I said, going to be closer to the end of June. Will your breast implants need to be replaced down the road or are they made to last a lifetime? And also, can you feel them. So these particular implants this day and age are meant to last at least 20 plus years. Now the only time that you have to replace them is if there is some issue over time with your implants. So at this point I don't know that I'm going to ever have to replace them. I guess time will tell with that. And can I feel them? Yeah. I can feel them. I mean, I can push on it right now. Like the implant is here and my actual breast is down here. So you can definitely feel them. However, once they drop slash fluff into place, you won't be able to feel them anymore. It just feels like a normal breast. How much was the difference in price between surgery in the US and surgery in Mexico? So I did talk a little bit about Amy's procedure and the price there, but for me, it was a drastic, drastic, drastic price difference. So my procedure, Again, I had a back lift and then I had an extended breast lift, which basically means it's cut all the way around a lift with implants. And in the US, I was quoted really anywhere between, now I had several consultations in the US. I had one for California, one in Phoenix and one in Tucson. And I was quoted anywhere between about 30 to $40,000 and going to Mexico, I paid a total, this includes hospital stay, anesthesia, transportation, medication, all of my pre-op testing, I paid 8,500. And this is the same with Amy, she paid 7,000 versus 20 to 30,000. Will you show more photos of your back once the inflammation goes down? I'd love to see the final product. Absolutely, I will share with you guys everything. So as my back progresses, I've been sharing updated photos in my Facebook group. So come join my Facebook group. I also share pretty regular updates over on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me there. But yeah, I will definitely show you guys before and after and keep you posted throughout the whole process. Those were all the questions on Facebook. So we're moving over to YouTube. I only have three brushes left to clean and then we'll just rapid fire through the rest of these. How did you find the place in Mexico, including the recovery house. And then she also asked about the cost, which I already covered. Uh, everything, all the information came from my friend, Victoria. So the recovery house that I stayed at is called Casa by Linda. She actually has two different recovery houses in Tijuana. They're right on the ocean. So it's really beautiful. And I did talk a little bit more also about the recovery house in the vlog, the plastic surgery vlog. So again, that is linked down below for you as well, but it was Casa by Linda. When going into surgery, what part scared you the most and why? Honestly, nothing about going into surgery necessarily scared me, but anytime I'm under anesthesia or anytime I have a surgery, obviously I'm going to be concerned about that. My biggest fear or concern was honestly, what's the recovery going to look like? Am I going to be safe? Is there going to be any complications? That's really kind of what I was thinking about. And like I said, everything went 
perfectly smooth and zero complications. Was there anything that you wish that you would have brought with you that you didn't before surgery? And was there anything that you brought that you didn't need? This is actually a fantastic question. As far as is there anything that I wish I would have brought? No, I feel like I prepared really well. I even brought a small pillow because I because I was thinking of the plane on the way home and that pillow came in so handy. I used that during my entire recovery, but everything was included in the recovery house. All of our food, medications, everything was included. So I don't feel like there's anything that I wish I would have brought. I did overpack in typical gen fa fashion. So I had quite a few extra clothing that I didn't end up using. I packed a lot of zip front things because I couldn't raise my hands over my head, which came in very handy. That's pretty much what I lived in. And then I brought some rompers. I've been wearing rompers nonstop since I got home, which I didn't use. But overall, no, I feel really good about how I prepared and packed and what I brought. Now that you're seeing the results, what is your favorite part? Things that you're happiest about. 100% my back. That is where I just am so happy. Actually, when I got up for the first time post-op and I had the wrap around me, I'll, I'll insert a picture for you. As soon as I got out of my bed to use the restroom, Amy started crying. She was amazed at the results of my back and it literally is brings tears to my eyes now because that was such a hard part for me was all the skin on my back. It was very hard on me mentally. It was hard on me physically. So I'm so happy it's gone. So, so happy that that skin is gone. And I can't wait to see the final results. How is your friend doing? What surgery did she have? And is she noticing good results? I talked about the procedure Amy had and let me insert an update from Amy. Hi, just wanted to give you a little update. I am almost three weeks post-op and I feel amazing. Today, my scar is deciding to shed a little bit. My scabs are starting to come off. It's very itchy. Um, I'm almost standing completely upright. Not quite, I'm almost there, probably 85%. Um, I'm able to take some wa short little walks around the neighborhood. Yesterday I had 7,500 steps, which is a huge accomplishment for me. The most I've had so far. Everything is really good. The doctor's reaching out as needed every three days it has been awesome. If I have any questions or concerns to address all of those. Yeah, life is uh, pretty good. I'm uh, still in my Faha 23 hours out of the day, which kind of stinks a little, but it's all part of the process. After losing over 100 pounds, did you consider a tummy tuck as well? No, I actually didn't. Lucky for me, lucky for me, my stomach was not where I carried a lot of my weight. I mean, I did carry weight in my stomach, but I carried a lot of weight in my back. So do I have loose skin on my stomach? Yes, I do. I definitely have some loose skin on my stomach, but it's not enough that I would go through the tummy tuck process. If anything, I would need a mini tummy tuck, but unless I'm going to be walking around in a bikini, which I'm not, I don't foresee, I didn't think that having a tummy tuck was a necessity and all of the procedures that I had were a necessity for me for function not necessarily for aesthetics that's also why I didn't have a thigh lift which my thighs are pretty bad and I definitely can use a thigh lift but I opted not to because for me it's about function not aesthetic were you told or have you figured out how much skin removed with surgery so Amy had eight pounds of skin removed. That's crazy. That's typical though for tummy tucks and 360 tummy tucks. For me, I only had about a pound and a half of skin removed off of my back and then I had implants put in. So any weight loss for me is null between removing the little bit of skin and putting in the implants. Amy also said she's also still swollen. So this could change, but she didn't notice a drastic weight loss from the surgery, but aesthetically wise, she, she looks incredible. Have you decided what your goal weight will be? Not really. I, I don't really go by numbers. I don't live and die by the scale. I focus more on how I feel. I feel really good where I am. What I want to do is see where my body lands after full recovery. Once all the swelling is gone and once I can get back to working out, where do I feel like I can sustain number wise on the scale? So as soon as I have a goal, as soon as I hit my goal, as soon as I decide what that goal is going to be, I'll definitely let you guys know. Why did you get the surgery and did it provide a better life reduction after weight loss? I hope I'm not 
being too graphic, I may want to have mine done. I talked a lot about why I had this surgery for function because it was very uncomfortable. The skin on my back, my breasts were very uncomfortable, very unflattering, and the skin on my back was really hard on me mentally. It, it looked like fat and clothing. I wasn't as confident with my body and I felt like after all the hard work I put in losing weight, I should be happy and confident in my body. So that's what drove me to choose the two procedures that I did. And that's the same for Amy as well. She's just as active as I am and all of the loose skin on her stomach was something that really mentally bothered her. Are you worried about gaining weight? Why plastic surgery? I know skin sag after weight loss, I'd be afraid, but I'm glad that you're doing well. So this is actually the last question because the next one was, would I get more surgery? And we talked about that. That's a no. I'm 100% not worried about gaining weight. Let me just explain why I'm not worried about that because taking off the weight, counting macros and calories is sustainable forever. I didn't do a quick fix. I didn't do a diet. I did not lose my weight on Weight Watchers or Ozempic or Octavia or low carb. I lost my weight eating a balanced diet, not restricting or eliminating any foods and really just living my best life while I lost weight and been able to maintain that weight loss. This counting calories and macros is a lifestyle for me. This is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. It's sustainable for me. I also allow myself a five pound window. And if I go above that five pound window, I rein it back in again. So I am not at all concerned about gaining my weight back. I know that weight fluctuation is normal. And like I said, I don't live and die by the scale. So I allow myself that five pound window. And if I go outside that window, that's when I know that I need to go back to basics and make some changes in order to maintain staying in that five pound window. But because I did this in a sustainable, healthy way, and like I said, I wish I would have counted calories and macros sooner. I wish I would have never done any of these diets because none of them are sustainable long-term. And because macros and calories is and not restricting or eliminating foods and just eating what I want in moderation is sustainable for me. I have zero concern about gaining my weight back. And let me tell you how comfort that gives me. Knowing that what I did to lose weight is exactly what I'm going to do to maintain my weight loss. It's just, it's like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. And I feel really confident that having this surgery was kind of the last step of my weight loss journey, which is amazing, which is really, really amazing. It makes me a little bit emotional because it's been such a process. It's been years and years of trying to take off the weight and finding something that actually worked and is sustainable for me. I'm so grateful that I discovered counting macros and calories. I'm so grateful that I became a nutrition coach and I'm so grateful that I've been able to help so many of you reach your weight loss goals. It really just fills my heart and soul with so much happiness. I'm not even the least bit concerned about gaining my weight back and that is so freeing. So those are all of your questions regarding plastic surgery. I will do Q and A's in the future. Like I said, I'll continue to keep you updated as I recover from plastic surgery. And if you have any other plastic surgery related questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, but I hope that this pretty much covered all of your questions. And I'm glad that I was able to get some things from Amy as well to share with you. She's doing wonderful. I'm so proud of her. She's just killing the recovery and she looks incredible. She's such a beautiful person inside and out. And this is just the final step for both of us, just feeling our authentic selves and the final step in our long, long, long weight loss journey. So if you enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up. Of course, subscribe if you're not. I would love to have you here. And don't forget to check out the description box for the plastic surgery vlog if you missed it. Nutrition coaching, please have your macros and calories done. I can't stress enough how game-changing this is in weight loss, as well as links and discounts to my favorite things. And of course, come join my Facebook group, follow me on Instagram to keep up with me day to day. Thank you for watching, friends. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.